Comfortable couch. Here we go. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another session of Playing from the Tips. Uh, we're here at the beautiful Harbor Hills Country Club, as always, and uh, we have Tom Leinberger, the head teaching PGA pro here at Harbor Hills, and we have a very, very special guest. And uh, uh, he and Tom go back a ways, and uh, they're already saying inside jokes behind my back that I can't explain or nothing about. So I'm going to let Tom introduce him, but I will say his name because I have it written down. This is Jamal Gibson, and Tom, take it away from there. Hey, Jamal, glad to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> Great the, to be here. Why don't you tell us, uh, you know, a little bit about your background and your degrees and college and, you know, and I know that we worked together in Maine, but then, you know, we met My to, first golf job. Yeah, first golf <laughs> job. Gilcrest. You've got a variety, so we can kind of yeah. uh, clue the audience in a little bit about you, because you're, you're an interesting person when you start looking that's at your really, background, that, for sure. That's, that's, that's an understatement. Kind. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> uh, interesting. You know, I needed my own jacket Yeah. some beer. Uh, uh, my name is Jamal Gibson. Uh, I went to University of Florida Go Gators, uh, bleeding orange and blue all the time. Wow. Especially at the end of the season, the past two seasons. Uh, but it's better now. We won our first game. <laughs> uh, I graduated with exercise sports science degree, which was kind of cool. Um, learned a lot about the body. Mm -hmm. Wanted to work with athletes from the very beginning and build bionic prosthesis. So those are two conflicting ideas, but... Wanted to make pretty cool robotics for people, so that was my inspiration. So have you made any of those? Have, uh, you, have you gone to... No, the, no, don't worry. Don't worry. Nobody has robot arms that I've made yet. I know. <laughs> but I was just wondering, have you, have you done, done the classes on that? I didn't know. That's something I didn't know about you. It's yeah, like I spent, uh, I spent the whole summer, last summer, in the library, actually, which is how I did my design and all that kind of stuff, and learned about 3D design and how to use a 3D printer and how to do robotics and how to use an Arduino board. We're getting off topic. Tom. I know. Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry. That yeah, was uh, sorry. A, a man of many up. mysteries. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that mystery. So that was, I'm just. Uh, so then I went to work at RDV Sportsplex, which is in Orlando. And from there, we had a ton of continuing education. It, I decided to be a trainer because I like that a lot. What now? For the audience, if they don't know where RDV is, it's where the magic train Yeah, Rich it's DeVos. where the Orlando Magic practiced before okay. uh, they went downtown. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of trainers there. It was the excellent environment for development, I would say. Um, Let me ask another question over there. Because you had, and I, I was up there. That's where we met. That's yeah. where we met. So you had, talk about cross-training in sports. You had tennis players, basketball players, strength trainers. Everything. Of, house yeah, moms. House moms. You young, had the... You could have had Bob even up there, man. No, I, at one time, I, I think I think we know each other from there. No, teach me how to eat, uh, you know, graham crackers. I, yeah. I'll, I'll go because that's what I like to do. It's much easier if you put chocolate and marshmallows on them. That's that right. Right. No, there you go. I'll be there. You, you didn't say teach you for health. You said teach you. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was there for close to nine years, eight and a half years. It was a it was a beautiful time. Um, and then I decided I wanted to be in golf. I had a client, and he talked me into playing, and it was the first thing I was horrible at. I've been decent at most sports, yeah. and I got beat by a man who was three times my age at the time. So I was like, how's that happen? He threw the gauntlet <laughs> down then, right? He did. He threw the gauntlet he, down. Was, he, he beat me by a full side, so <laughs> that, was, that was not cool. Um, but, you know, it was, it was interesting because I loved all of the physics involved in golf. I loved the movements. I loved how precise it was, but also, you know, power was part of the game, precision, being calm under pressure. It was mental and physical. It was, it was my cup of tea. Yeah. It was English. I liked it. Oh. Well, can I ask you something? Because obviously uh, you've got the, uh, the courses you've taken in college and obviously you're in great shape. But I mean, uh, I'm, I guess the question is, how do you, is there, there's more of, of a complex answer than just knowing the anatomy. You've got to know physics. You've got to know all sorts of things. Now, is that something that you take as part of your oh, yeah. degree, per se? Um, well, I was fortunate. My mom was a teacher, and she made us make sure we learned something every day. So that became a habit. It wasn't just uh, it wasn't an attempt anymore. It was just natural. And so I talk, when I took my TPI in 2006, mm -hmm. I talked to these guys from Alabama. And they were like, oh, you should read The Golf Machine by Homer Kelly. 
don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that one. That, that book, like, it's, it's not a simple that. read. It's it's not like uh, what is it called the the something lie. It's not that book. This is my great. Finally, uh, an instructor that tells you not to read. This is great. <laughs> this is great. I didn't say don't I'm read. Yeah, don't read that. Don't read that book because it, it was written by uh, Homer Kelly. Was uh, uh, I think it was Air. Aerodynamics or aeronautics or yeah. something like that, and he was complex. Okay. And I loved every bit of it, except it, it read very difficult. So if you can understand golf on that level and you can comprehend that book, then when you get to go in front of a golf coach, you can understand uh, the paths and planes and compression, and it just it made it simplified the game because on that level, very few people would be able to pick that up and be able to relate it. But it had pictures, wow. so it helped. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I definitely there's there's so much to the complexity of golf, but then again, it all comes back to being very simple. You know, take the club away, bring it back, turn your body. Like, keep it simple. Swing hard, hit it far, like it says in Golf exactly. Digest. You can't beat that. If it's Ooh. not going straight, swing harder. That'll be 500 bucks yeah. Yeah. That, for that tip. Where, which club are we at? <laughs> <laughs> that does help. But one of the things, like, if you talk about, we, we've talked about, you got baseball, basketball, golf, and that, that the amateurs get confused on I think a lot and, and some of the pros even do the good players is that uh, leverage they think you're swinging your arms but the power is the ground force 100% see uh, that was 100% 100% see? and that is That's that is amazing. the ultimate truth I'll give you an analogy which I love to use uh, you know because when you I used to deal a lot with juniors as you know right and uh, I worked at Maine Golf and Tennis Academy I worked for uh, Gary for a while Gary Gilchrist which was a fantastic experience and one of the things that the parents would always say is, oh, my kid weighs 105 pounds, he's 6'1". Like, that's not good numbers, but right. it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. he, needs, he needs to gain 30 or 40 pounds. And I said, okay, why? Yeah. Like, you know, just put a, put a weight vest on him and that'll be the same thing. <laughs> but on that, on that same conversation, if you have something moving at a speed, like people always look at speed for distance, right? Mm -hmm. When you look at club head speed, that was right. like the number one thing for that's five or six years. Everybody, it's thing. all they were talking about. Yeah, you're going to have this club head speed. But it's, it's the transfer of energy that makes all the difference in the world for consistent driving distance. And that goes back to my understanding of physics. But imagine I, I told you that something was going to hit you at 30 miles an hour. And I give you three options, and you tell me which one you want to pick. One is going to be a fly. One is going to be a dog. And the other one's going to be a bus. <laughs> all moving 30 miles an hour. Why would, you, why would you choose what you would I'll choose? I'll pick the fly. Exactly. You want to survive it. You get yeah. hit by the bus. Well, it's the, it's the transfer of mass is also essential. And that's one of the things that Tom and I worked on a lot when we were together is we got to see if you put your body toward being nice and rigid at the right point, then your distances are consistent. So that's extremely, extremely helpful. And the, the other thing is, and you guys have, I, I harp on it all the time too, is you know, posture. Oh, goodness gracious, yeah. Oh, my. That's like it, 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 good players – if you're a good player, it's, it's alignment and, and your setup, your mm -hmm. posture, if something gets out of whack. Now, a beginner or a higher player, they have the C curve or they, they – they, Or they hump the ball. Yeah, or they you hump just, the ball. If you can keep your body in a balanced posture, then you're going to hit it straight a lot more. We all know that. A balanced finish is just about everything. Yeah. It truly is. So, um, yeah, we, we would work a ton on posture with most of the golfers that I had from all levels. I mean – Beginners, even all the way up to you know your elite pros, getting in the right spot, being able to keep your body moving and working toward the ball is, you know, the difference between making a cut and, you know, finishing high like top five, top ten. Because we all we all would do anything for consistency. Golfers will buy new clubs in a heartbeat. Oh yeah, save a stroke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or to think they're gonna save a stroke. Exactly. So yeah. RDV. So you went, worked at RDV. I worked at RDV. RDV. Where, and then, where, uh, where did our next adventure go? Well, I went to Maine Golf and Tennis Academy. And that was, we, we had an international academy there. Yeah. He worked with the advanced kids and the beginners. We had about 100 kids in the advanced class. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. From all over the world, a lot of fun. And he would do the training. We would do, we'd do training every day. Now, we what did it. that entail? It entailed just getting the kids used to using their bodies. When you have juniors, the most important thing is coordination because you got to think about it. Tom's a golf coach, and if I gave you a choice between somebody who is not very good at moving and an athlete, and you get to choose one, I can guarantee you that which one he's going to pick. Yeah, yeah. So helping the, helping the students become a lot more athletic, just unlocking some of the natural capabilities of the body um, was what we focused on. So we did a ton of different movements. It wasn't about strength as much as it was coordination and movement. What about keeping it fun? fun. I remember we did a lot of fun. We did keeping it a lot of fun. We had, 
uh, parachutes for one time. Yeah, the sprinting so, parachutes. Sprinting parachutes. That's right. We came up with, uh, <laughs> let's say Bob and I, we were both in the camp together. We, Jamal would say, all right, we get two guys, and then we put the parachutes on them, and then they had to sprint. Sprint with like a parachute. 50, 60 yards, and so you could slap the guy's hand the fastest. <laughs> exactly. So we had we, contests we raced, on yeah. just working with resistance. Because, you know, we have kids from everywhere, and, and the more fun you make it, everybody can absorb fun visually. Oh, sure. And so it made it pretty simple to get the kids involved and have a couple of games. I mean, it still was, if you wanted to talk about it systematically, it's ground reaction force, it's a lot of lower body power, it's explosion. It's well, yeah, it's gotta be, but it's got to be fun, especially with the kids, because yeah. the kids, that, their first thing is, am I enjoying this or not? And you got to make sure <laughs> they're having a good time. Once they have a good time, then they'll surprise themselves and you, I would think. No, it was, it was a great time. I think the yeah. kids had an amazing time. I think the trainers did, too. Not the trainers, the coaches. The coaches, yeah. Yeah, the coaches yeah. had a great time. And all of the, um, what are they called, the house parents? Uh, Not the house parents. The counselors. The counselors, yeah. Counselors. The counselors had a great time, too. Yeah. So it was, it was a great experience. So we did a lot of station it. training there, too, where they would yeah. do. We did circuits. We did circuit training. Oh, really? So in they small groups be, like small groups, I say 20, 25. They do some kind of a balance thing, and then they might do push ups, sit ups, crunches. And so then yeah. I was going to say, do you make, but did you make it different uh, amounts for different age people? groups? Yeah, right. Or, yeah. Or even, I'm talking about two 10 year olds, but if one is uh, 80 well, pounds. We, we gave them the space <laughs> to be able to do it in a certain amount of time. Yeah, so okay. It, that's, yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. I think that's, that's very fair. The, the other one, I think that, that the, that I learned from you right off the bat was each kid, when you, if you brought a kid in, Bob, that Jamal would take them through an assessment, an assessment for sure. and, and look at, they put a club behind their back, they do squats, they do d different motions on how much range of motion. If you take a golfer and they go, all right, I want you to move your shoulder back, and they can't move this back, there's no rotation in their shoulder. Yeah, that, that becomes a limit for the golf coaches. So. Right. So they know that you look at if you the more this goes this way, the easier it is to generate power in yeah. golf. If this is forward, it's harder to generate a lot. Of and power. it's hard, you know, you could fight that battle to stay on plane all day, but if the body can't do it, it can't do it. So we'd always check ankles, hips, and shoulders. And that was like one of the major things you have to. In core strength. Yeah. I mean, you can't get enough core strength. The no. one thing I learned about Jamal, hanging around him, the stronger your core is, your back and your abs. You've got to have game easy. It makes the game That's easy. That's the support unit. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you what. Well, we are, believe it or not, we're already done with our first round here, but we are going to be back at Harbor Hills Country Club with our guest, Jamal Gibson, and, <laughs> and we're going to find out. Oh, I have a lot more questions for Jamal. I'm, I'm Let's waiting. Let's see if Wait, I can trip him up. I'm ready. But we'll, yeah. we'll be back for the second round of playing from the tips right after this. We are back with the second round here at Playing from the Tips at beautiful Harbor Hills Country Club. And as always, I'm here with Tom Leinberger, the head uh, PGA teaching pro here at Harbor Hills, and our special guest, Jamal Gibson. Now, Jamal uh, and Tom go way back, and Jamal is everything. I, I, I know I've got you down as a sports physiologist. I've got you down doing everything. All I know is I want a I I body like that when I get to be his age. I'm sure I can still grow into it if you get my drip. But uh, no, uh, we were talking about uh, some of the uh, training they were doing for some of the kids when you were up in Maine, and I, that's the fantastic what they've got. Uh, the, the kids, are, they absorb so quickly these days. As long as they're having fun, they sound like they figured that out. They made it fun, and uh, the kids are going great guns. So, uh, so take take me past uh, Maine, and where'd we get to from there? For me, um, I was in Maine for I think a little bit less than a month. Mm. Yeah, I was there for like a little two, less. two months maybe. I think it was well. Yeah, yeah. so I was in Maine for the summer. Okay, yeah. summer. <clears throat> I came back and I was inspired. I had to have some type of opportunity to be able just to be in, engulfed in golf because at the time, like I said, I was. Working at a gym, sorry, I was working at a gym and it was, it was beautiful, but you know, just the, what I needed, I needed to find on a golf course or in a, a community. So I went to work at, actually answered an ad online and ended up at Isleworth Country Club. Ooh. Yeah. Hello. So I was, I, it didn't say, it just said in Windermere, I signed up for it, went in, uh, got offered the position and trained a little bit, um, you know, general population again, but in a country club. Which was how, was, how was the position? Uh, how was it posted? What did it? What? What? What was the personal position? trainer needed in Windermere? Wow, how that about was that? it. That was that it. simple. Okay. So I, I just I responded to the <laughs> ad and 
I went in, and when I got to the gate, I was like, wait, this is, this is Iowa. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. The Tiger's cool. here. Where's, right? where's the gym? Yeah. <laughs> so I went in, and uh, I was fortunate enough to get hired, and I got to interact a little bit with the population, and being around golfers made me super happy, smile ear to ear, and I loved it. Um, eventually, I got to work with my very first tour pro, who I still get the chance to see and work with every once in a while to this day. Um, we yeah, had, Charles Hall? Yeah, yeah, Charles yeah. Hall. Charles so what Hall. Was, yeah. So what was... Uh, stopping for a minute, Bob. What was his? Uh, what was Charles Howell? What, what did he have to work on? You look at two players; they're they're elite athletes. How did you try to take him to the next level? Where is? I I actually I actually did a lot with his coordination athleticism as well. And I remember when I met him, he came in and he asked me a question about his current program. He had, he had actually put on some significant amount of muscle and size. That's exactly how his program was built. I told him there's that program did exactly what it was supposed yeah. to do. Yeah, I, mean, we're talking, I remember when he yeah. came up, he looked like uh, skin and bones. Right. I mean, exactly. He, he you weighed know, 130 so. soaking wet, I think. I'm, maybe more than that, but yeah. I mean. But. So, and, and he wasn't, it wasn't transferring to the ball. And, you know, and of course, think, think all the reading and all the research and all that kind of stuff, but transfer to the ball was the thing that I was the best at. I could definitely, if you needed to unload force into an impact object, I was your guy. So I got one week to work with him. And I guess he was, uh, he was okay with what I did. And he had some really good response from it. And he tells me all the time that I did a great job there. And I'm grateful for that confidence because it well, helped me a lot. You've obviously helped him because I don't know if you remember when Charles Hell first started, Charles Howley, uh, he had some success. And he kind of went away for a couple of years. He, he, had, uh, he fell on some hard times or he wasn't uh, – he was always a top ten golfer there for a while when he was younger. And he, he left the scene for – now he's back with a vengeance. Yeah. So I would think that uh, you got to feel pretty good about that. Because hey, listen, I don't, I don't carry the bag. I don't read the yardages. <laughs> I just try and, you know, when I'm fortunate enough to be in that position to help someone, I just try and make sure they're as equipped as possible. You know, Charles, Charles could win any week, though, on the tour. He's, he's, that, good. Well, he's, that, he's, he's that good. good. He's that yeah, good. He definitely. is that good a golfer. Uh, yeah. I would say, honestly, in my opinion, I've, I've watched a lot of guys on the range, and his work ethic is immaculate. But not only that, but for pound for pound, that guy hits the ball harder than anybody I know, like, period. And it's it's with you know it's with the right kind of effort. Well, I know, love like I love his swing. I, I I love watching him play. And he takes a he takes a healthy cut at he, it. He takes a man's yeah, swing. Yeah, he yeah. takes a big cut yeah, at I the ball. It. But he it. has his balance. And uh, I remember when he he and obviously he has put on some weight. And I'm, I'm sure it makes it a le- little easier not for you to work with him, but uh, easier to make the transfer to get the you know get some results because now he looks. Uh, he looks like he's in shape. He's got a very, he he's got a very like good build. He's for, yeah. He looks like he's fit. He's looking and, he, and he's a, he's a strong guy. Honestly, he does. He like I said, he works at it so hard, and uh, it's good when you know you put in that much effort and you're able to get what you need out of it. So did you do? Uh, did give us an example with your strength exercises and diet combination with him? With or? him, it was uh, it was it was focused mostly, like I said, on coordination. So let's say we had maybe two or three strength exercises, and then we would always ingrain that into a pattern. So I would have something that was based purely on coordination and understanding the, the, the synergy between balance and rotation. Because unless you, you could work on things, and if you separate them too much, you have 10 thoughts trying to make a movement. And we all know in golf, you can't have more than uh, one. If you overanalyze, you get paralyzed. I exactly. remember that. That's... And you end up with a Barkley swing. Yeah. No, but, no so. but was he, uh, in fact, you're talking about coordination. Maybe this doesn't apply, but I mean, was he an athlete himself in terms of... There, it, I think some golfers, the, I think, they must be a good athlete. And some of them, I think, ah, they can't be that good an athlete. I don't know in his I case. think that he picks up patterns really well. So once he comprehends something, it's one of the best transfers I've ever seen because he can work it back to the ball. Everything that we did, if I told him how it related to his swing, it was, it was in there the next day. Wow. Or that same day. Wow. And that's one of the best gifts I think anybody could have is being able to take something that you learned and implement it right away. Now, of course, there was, you know, there's some feats that – to this day, we're still working on athletically, mm-hmm. but once again, it's so ancillary. It's so outside of what he truly needs to worry about. Mm-hmm. If he does it 10%, he's doing it enough. How about so, that? Yeah. Again, I like that as from a teacher. <laughs> I like that a lot. So, Bob, Bob a little while ago, you were going to stump him, but what did oh, I give say? Me, give me one of those questions. Well, what, what was it? What was Vegas said you had We're talking about Charles Howell. Trans- oh, we're just talking about, I, I thought we were going to get a little more. We will get into just about so you're softening being, me up being in oh. shape. No, I, but it's I'm, a I, loop. I'm going to I'm going to bring up, uh, let's talk about two names on the tour that I'd like to talk about. Tim Heron. And I don't even know the guy's first name, but his last name is Affid Barnrat. Uh, Affid Barnrat. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these guy. guys are 
got to be about three. Their they're they're going to be three <laughs> to three twenty-five. These these are big. These are John Daly like guys. I mean, uh, and I always think, how do you how do you work with somebody who obviously now that doesn't mean they're not athletes and they're not in shape, but they're carrying just a ton of weight that they got to transfer. It's called the beauty of bowlers. Have you ever heard that? No. That before? No. So when you you could have somebody who. On the outside, it doesn't look like they're very athletic, but just their coordination and their ability to control their body in that okay. way can, can be a skill that you can't understand. And so I think when it comes to Tim Heron, I, kn I know somebody who got a chance to work with him and play next to him. And they said, like, the guy is extremely good at making a move. Like, the move that he makes to the ball is great. That's why he's a great player. It's not necessarily that he's the most athletic-looking player, but the, the guy you were talking about, Appy Bonrat. Yeah, is once again amazing hands, fantastic oh, they, eyes, uh, and great they balance. They've got to have great skills. I mean, with that, you just think, geez, uh, uh, how they're not exactly hitting the uh, hitting the bag or hitting the <laughs> hitting the gym too often. Now maybe they are, and I'm, it's just not uh, as visible in transfer. Yeah, that's right. exactly. That's but won't, exactly. won't if you get them, if you get that person in shape, then would it change? Yeah, I mean, there, I would there think is, that there, there's always a nice equatable balance and so it depends like some people they function exactly where they are to the best of their ability because there's a comfort there they like i mean you take john daly john daly when he was nice and big and happy and content and having his cocktails and smoking his cigarettes on the course he was happy and he was doing exactly what he needed to do because his mindset was right when you go and you break that mindset sometimes i think that's where we as trainers we have to be very careful because we're not out there to make everybody look like adonis everybody doesn't mm -hmm. have to look like adam scott to play that well well, the other thing, if I relate it to the teaching side, you look at a person's swing and say, well, I want to change this, and you go, oh, maybe not. That's their quirk. Leave it alone. Because yeah. they could do some weird... If you tried to change... If you went... If Furyk was 10 years old and came to me, you go, yeah, oh, what are you move, doing? You're definitely going to move that takeaway. But yeah. But so, if you watched him hit a few shots and he striped them all, you go, oh, let me look at impact. And you go, <laughs> yeah, now let a me good see teacher might go... Oh, we might have to leave well, that well, alone. That's impacts. another thing. That's, a, that's one of my probably biggest soapboxes is what's the ultimate goal? The goal is not to show that Jamal is the best trainer in the world. I could honestly care less. The goal is you want to go out there and you want to hold trophies. You want to go out there and play your absolute best golf. And we're going to look at what that takes. We're going to put the components together. If it's, if it's A, B, or C, we're going to put those in. We're not going to throw in everything we can just so that you can work really hard and look a certain way. The most important thing is you play golf for a, a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You need to make money when you go out there, so you need to be in your best form to play golf. And for some people, I think they work too f far in a certain direction, and they, don't, they lose track of the ultimate goal. It becomes more about, okay, well, I gotta make sure I'm doing everything I can, lifting and doing all that kind of stuff. Great, but how strong do you actually have to be to hit a ball well? I've seen little guys hit the ball a country mile. I know people yeah. who hit it past me. I'm yeah. a big guy. I mean, I, I play. Don't get me wrong. I play, and I, I hit the ball pretty hard. But then again, there's a nice synergy. Mm -hmm. Because if the same muscles, I'll tell you this from the anatomical side, the same muscles that you have that create rotation also stabilize your body and movement. And if you spend too much time turning those into stabilizers, you lose a lot of your speed and your power going into the golf ball. I mean, that's, just, that's not a sacrifice you're willing to make if you're making money playing golf. You know, it's interesting because you bring that up. Uh, I, I'm going to bring up a name who was pretty big, I'm going to say 15 years ago, and that was David Duvall. David Duvall was number one in the world. David Duvall, somebody told him he looked fat or something. Yeah, anyway, he, oh, he yeah. went on a diet, and uh, he trimmed himself up, and he said, look what a great shape he's in. Well, he lost his golf game. I don't know if, uh, if one begets the other. I don't know. Jenny Miller built a house by himself hammered nails and did all that and then he couldn't play he got really bulky up here and then he struggled to well play. that's what i mean so you, you once you go through one. a physical change like that i mean that's a whole nother now you're dealing with an entirely different animal yeah and you got mcelroy yeah who yeah. went fanatical on training yeah and 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 we were talking about before the show starts he struggled a little bit but he made the comment on on one of the talk shows he said they said yeah, he's getting too big and McElroy said i'll just drive the green i'll prove everybody wrong so he exactly, had that swagger yeah. he goes i'm just gonna knock it out on one butt yeah, i mean he you, didn't you like the fact especially that, this week you can't argue with the result no, no. That's what I mean, yeah. but there's there's a quality of movement that comes from being able to condition and do everything and the in in fitness and only i can only speak on my profession and in fitness you have the ability to change your body very quick so people would look at my build and say, there's no way this guy's flexible. But truth be told, 
if as long as you get used to moving the right way, then it won't affect your golf swing. But if you're working in the wrong direction, you never get a transfer left to right side when those things are important. Yeah, it'll jam up your swing. It'll mess you up. Well, I'll tell you what. The, with that being said, we're down with the second round. And get, the good news is we all made the cut. So we'll be back uh, That's right. after That's the right. break turn. But Working we'll for be the back, weekend. And we're going to be talking about how some of the principles we're talking about apply to, the, say, the difference between men and women, old and young. Uh, we've got all sorts of questions we're going to hit you all with. And we'll see if he's as adept at it as he was in the second Fingers round. Crossed. So we'll be back with playing from the tips, the third round, right after this. That's nice. We're back with the third round of playing from the tips here at beautiful Harbor Hills Country Club. Of course, I'm with the head pro, Tom Lineberger, and our special guest, Jamal Gibson. And uh, again, since they go way back and they're all buddies, they want to keep me out of the conversation. Yeah, not <laughs> even Remember close. We'll I'm see waiting for those happens. questions. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Talk amongst so, yourselves. I'll sit back and listen. So Lake, you went to, we talked about off camera for a minute. Lake Nonia, you, you work with y Yanni Singh. Well, I was at Alworth, and then I went to work for Gary. For uh, Gary Gilchrist. Well, I was, actually, I did both at the same time, so I... You had both. Yeah, I remember that. Both, I was, was talking to you about that. that was that was fun. Yeah, <laughs> that was a lot of work. You never went home. You just no, kept working. No, I, I went home basically at like I woke up at five o'clock in the morning, started at Alworth uh, promptly at six, and I was manager there at that time. Uh, so I managed the fitness and spa, and then I would leave at two o'clock and or one thirty, get to Gary's by two thirty, be on the range, and do that until do eight o'clock at night, and then come home. And I lived in by the Millennium Mall, working in Howie, which that that ride was gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, but it was great. I mean, I just needed to be in an environment where I felt like I worked with athletes who had a, a trajectory. I wanted to say because I mean, it, it's great to work in a club, but I needed to learn and see more swings and get a mindset and a perspective from more than one coach, which I thought was very helpful when I went to Gary. Um, because, you know, we had 11 or 12 coaches and, you know, you have athletes from all over the world. You have kids who we had one kid who played his first tournament with the plastic still on his clubs. Yes, wow. like the way they came from the factory, the way he <laughs> hit it. I was like, that's amazing. It's going to be tough to get spin on some <laughs> of the irons. <laughs> Listen, if you're working from that concept, spin is not one of the things yeah. you have to worry about. <laughs> but it was, it was great, and I uh, also got a chance to work with pros and, you know, just that whole spectrum, but it was a full immersion in golf and conditioning, the mindset, you know, the mental side of golf, the physical, the technical side. It was a, it was a plunge. And, and that, you know, Yanni sang 152 weeks, number one. We were talking yeah, about that. Yeah. that. That's We didn't stutter on that one, 152 weeks. That's yeah. amazing in itself. And then you turn around, and, the, the you know, the kids you dealt with and the pros, everybody thinks about when things are going well, but miss shots and how they handle that and adversity says a lot about a player. Oh, yeah, for sure. I You know, being close to that situation, I can say – Two things, honestly. One, I've never seen a person work harder than Yanni, and I've never seen a person throw a soccer ball. I almost died three or four times, so I know that for a fact. She, she had a great work ethic, uh, just a wonderful, kind person, but there is so many other things that... There's a professional side of being a professional golfer, a professional athlete, period. And I think that the part that escapes most people is the, more, the better you do in golf, the more people want your time. If you're number five... People might talk to you every once in a while. You're number one. Everybody's going to want to talk to you. Everybody's going to want to sponsor you. You're going to have media just as much as you have practice, more than you have practice. Like, that was one of the things we watched with the – when we had players that had success, it was a media tour, like, right after. You know, you're now, on Golf now, Channel. You're on you, this, you're on that. Did you give, give them guidance on how much is an overload on that, trying to do their schedule or said, hey, you've got to work out, you've got to practice, you've got to play? I was their trainer, not their manager. Uh, so, you know, my, I, I reserved my input for only where it needed to be utilized, right. I think out of respect for those people who had those roles and were able to make those decisions because that's, that's what they were there for. Um, I will say it, it takes a certain mindset and personality to be able to get in there week after week after week because in golf, uh, something so unconscious, like, you know, putter, the putter can kill everybody. You can hit the ball great. Make nothing. You can, you can hit 18 greens. And you'll shoot 77. Like, how does that happen? Because, yeah. I mean, you miss from we four feet. We look at Stenson the other week. I mean, he wins, he makes everything. And you look the next at, week. You look at Rory. Yeah. 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 Rory he struggled make, for a little bit there. With well, the he's putter. like, was 100 and something on the tour and putting for a while. Now exactly. And then he changed he putters, went. and all of a sudden, look what happened. He wins. And he, you know, and that, that's one of those things that working in golf, you see that that's what separates, once again, that separates the great players from the okay players. Is they, when, when it's time, they score. 
Because, you know, you can do everything in the world, but you're going to turn that scorecard, and that's how they're going to pay you. It's very, very important that you learn how to score, even in adversity. So I think one of the things that I saw, um, especially being on the inside of a couple of people who had won, is it's so easy to get distracted. Your schedule changes. You don't get to spend as much time on the course when you're number one for that long. Imagine what her day looked like when she went. Like, we went to Phoenix, and it was... We got to the course at 6 o'clock in the morning. I didn't see her until 12 o'clock because of press, because of all the things that she had to do. And then I saw her at 12 o'clock. Like, that's unbelievable. So that's now you take four hours away, six hours away from a, a player who's right. got to play that week. It's not like she was there on vacation. She had to play that week. So that demand is so, so different. And if you're going to gonna want to be the number one, you have to understand the number one comes with a lot of responsibility to a lot of people. It's amazing when you put that in perspective how long Tiger played number one with his right. pulling mm -hmm. him and talking about Tiger. He's mm -hmm. on his way back on this his week. Way back. You know, we all have our fingers crossed, and so does yeah. I'm sure Time Warner or whoever NBC is like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get those ratings up, bro. <laughs> it, it's just, it, it, I don't care what anybody says. It's so different watching when he plays. You don't have to be a fan of, of him, but you definitely have to be a fan of the difference it makes when he's in the field. What do you think of uh, being a trainer, and you've seen the injuries he's gone through in the back? Surgery. Yeah. You got to remember, I saw him every day for four years. Yeah. When he come, when he was home, I saw him every day for four years when I was working at Alworth. And you know, watching having a background once again more more of it, I worked with a lot of athletes who were not athletes, but people who came from you know post rehab. Right. So they would come from seventy percent of quality of living, and I saw so many injuries: knee replacements, hip replacements, fusions, shoulders. Well, um, they always tell surgery. you that if you know if you do rehab before you ever have to operate on your back. That's one thing I thought about Tiger. I, for him to say, hey, I'm going to operate. Because usually, not usually, but it's, it's, it's always a gamble. I yeah, think, but injuries, you. the thing is injuries compound. And he was such a, a mentally strong person. Like sometimes that, that, that bullet you carry is pointing at you. And sometimes you believe yourself to be tougher than you're truly prepared. You want to get back so bad because you know that you could, you could beat somebody with one arm. But if that arm is injured, you need time to rest that arm. And, right. and, you know, when you have, he had knee surgery, that affects your hips. That affects your, your ankles. So you compensate. You compensate. Mm -hmm. Those muscles get tight, and it becomes very, very deep. And I think that that's, uh, that's one of the things with rushing to get back from an injury. Like, hearing that you have to be out for eight months is enough to break somebody's heart. But it's yeah. better to be out for eight months and be ready to come back than trying to come back in four months and having to go to another surgery and another surgery because now, I mean, selfishly, I don't get to watch him play on the weekend for a whole year, which is completely unacceptable. <laughs> well, the other thing, from a player standpoint, and, and you've had success at golf, I've had success, when you play well, once you know you can miss, for a while there, he didn't think he was ever going to miss a shot or exactly. a putt. Now, exactly. he's played a few years where he goes, man, I, I can be human. I can miss it. And he's not 21 anymore. Right. No, that's right. Like, you know, if, if you've ever had an injury and you, anybody over 30, you've had an injury, it's way different than when you're 20. 20, you can walk off a gun wound. Like, at 40, you're, you're lucky if you don't get a cold. Like, it's completely different. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Because <laughs> you're still 20. I want to know, know what it's like at 60. Yeah. I know. Hey, just don't find out. That'd don't, be a great thing. Don't get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. So where do you, where'd you go? You, yeah, you worked. You had a chance to be with Tiger and and uh, and then Yanni I worked Singh. with the juniors um, and the pros with Gary, which is where I probably had the highest rate of development. I mean, it was amazing. And then I still was working at Alworth as well um, as I worked with Gary. So I thought that that was fantastic because I got to see just from having one pro, I ended up with six. So I was working on all tours, um, well, had success. You know, the all tours, you went, we were PGA, talking about LPGA, the LPGA, web. and then you went with Srixon. No, no, it was Volvic. Oh, Volvic. Volvic okay. yeah. You went with Volvic with the LPGA tour for a year. With, a year. With, yeah, it was really cool. So that with the Volvic, how many, you had six or eight players on that? Ten. Ten, okay. Wow. We had ten players. Uh, we were in amenity, so I was, you know, do you want to train? Do you want to towel? It was good. <laughs> um, and it was great to be able to walk, work with population for a whole, for a whole season. Just to see it. I mean, so that when you traveled, you went every tournament with that group played. I went ten of the fourteen that they had uh, on the schedule. So that had to tur being out and seeing different areas and in, in different states, yeah, and different. And environments. I can say that the guys have it way different than the ladies. I, I mean, not to complain, but it is just so different. I think one of the ways if they were going to improve is to make the amenities toward the ladies a little bit more accessible, which they I think they've been working on. Um, 
Like the fitness or all yeah, amenities? Yeah, fitness. fitness. Yeah, because, I mean, just traveling is a completely different beast. And that's when, when players transfer from college to the pros, that's one of the things that they usually stumble with is getting acclimated city to city, knowing where things are, getting comfortable. Because when you have a coach to tell you where everything is, it's pretty easy. But when it's just you and your crew, you got to figure it out. You got to figure it out. Yeah. And, uh, but working with those ladies, was it was really cool because that dynamic is, is amazing. And when you can get somebody's body in a great position – you can get so much more out of them than they thought they could get out of themselves. I mean, our ladies had a great cut percentage. It was above 70% for our players cut for the whole year. That's you know, awesome. I keep those stats because that's how I kind of equate my value is, you know, am I, am I well, being they're making effective? a paycheck. They make the cut. I mean, that's exactly. the bottom. I, need, I know when I played in events, I always – that's how – I didn't get a chance to practice a lot because in my profession you end up teaching and doing other – but I always, when I played, I was like, the if I got a check, I did good. Exactly. I mean, I kept it kind of simple. If I didn't get a check, I need to practice a little bit more and see if I can make the <laughs> make the cut and get a check. So I Precisely. Kinda, yeah. yeah. If, I, if I won, if I played good and got beat by somebody that just played better, I didn't, never had a problem with that. But if I didn't play up to what I felt like I was capable of playing, then, then I was like, I, I got to get step up my because game. Because you right. want your most. I mean, everybody yeah. wants to go play their you best. You want to walk out and say, hey, I gave it my best. If you didn't feel you gave it your best, then I would go to Jamal or – Somebody to say, hey, I want to take a look at my swing and figure out where I'm, where I'm out of whack. Which is true. And for you, it was getting toward your toes and off your heels. I yep. still remember that when we were on the range in Maine. And the way you hit the ball, I was like, that's what you need to do always. Yeah. Which was great. Um, then from Volvic, I, Volvic was a great experience. It, like I said, it gave me that long-term experience. And then I worked off and on with a lot more mini-tour players and some pros from home. I didn't travel because I, I had a little baby at home and then I had another little baby. So that's enough to keep you there. I got three girls. Not as many as you, but I yeah. got three. So it's good to be home. Like so, so, from the, so where'd you go from Volvic now? From Volvic, I actually ended up working for a junior from China. And, uh, just one player? Just one player. Had from him for China. five months. Traveled with him. How uh, old AJGA. was he? He How? was 16. 16. Um, we did the U.S. Open qualifier and made it past the first stage, which was really good. Wow. I know, but like I said, I just sold in the bag. I was glad I made the whole lap. I can tell you that. <laughs> and then we got to go down to the, the Bears Club is where he did his second round. And, you know, it's being that young and that it's an overwhelming field. You see all these guys who are professionals and they're playing at such a high level of golf and you're trying to keep pace with that. And I told him not to worry about it, but he's 16. Yeah. That's and, you know, we've all worked with juniors. It's, it's an overwhelming stage. But... To this day, he still plays. Um, he didn't get into college where he wanted to go, so he went and played professional in China. And he's turned pro, actually, I think, last week. And so far, it's really good. He's a great, great, great player. We, we were talking about that we had five mini-tour players, some on web.com, yeah. that were here this uh, winter for us. And uh, Adam Schreiber, who was, was their, their trainer for a lot of the pros that were here, um, and what was really interesting watching them is they spent as much time in the weight room here at Harbor Hills as they did on the range. Yeah. They, they, they did a lot of speed ball training with a lot of medicine balls, and then they did fr free weights, and then they did um, um, balance stuff, but, but a lot of medicine ball work and a lot, a lot of speed drill. And, and they were interesting. That his philosophy was you have to confuse the body to, to, to get used to making that change. Yeah, you, you definitely have to force the body to adapt because in that you learn, you, you command a skill. And I think that that mindset is really important because there's controls you have to have. Um, but another beautiful thing is, let's talk about the truth about movement, right? The golf, the golf swing is a movement, and if you want to get stronger in that movement, then you need to put resistance to it. And you're not going to get that from just hitting balls. From hitting balls, you gain skill, you gain awareness. But you still have to work on that, that mechanism. You have to work on that machine. What causes it to rotate? What helps it be stable? So that's why it's great that they spent that half and half because I'm pretty sure their results were reflective of that. I'll tell you what, uh, and with that uh, great insight, we're going to finish the third round here. But we are going to be back. I've got some questions for Jamal. Now it's Tom time. Tom lets uh, me ask them. And uh, we'll be back. you got to raise your hand. Especially <laughs> guest Jamal Gibson. Yes, we'll my guest on the right. With the fourth <laughs> round of playing from the tips here at Harbor Hills right after this. We are back with the fourth and final round of playing from the tips here at beautiful Harbor Hills. Of course, I'm with Tom Leinberger, the head teaching uh, PGA professional 
here at Harbor Hills and our special guest, Jamal Gibson. And before these two start talking about old times again, I am going to ask a couple questions here, Jamal, Jamal and then I'll, Do I'll, have let, a buzzer? I'll let Tom nice take him over again. But, uh, <laughs> no, just in, uh, I was listening to all the things you had to say, and it makes sense. I was wondering, do you have to... Uh, approach, uh, say, a man versus a woman differently or an old person versus a young person in terms of your theories? Um, I think that one of the really, really important things is that each person is an individual. So mm -hmm. um, there's a spectrum that goes into athletics and movement. And depending on how coordinated and strong that person is for their build and their, their level and their age mm -hmm. um, is where you can kind of put that person in that space. I think that just comes from practicing and coaching and understanding what you're looking at. Because, um, I mean, I've had some guys who were, whose sh strength was the number one thing that they needed. And the way they went about creating strength in the golf swing was the reason why they weren't as effective. So we helped them create a clean power system in their body, and they became way stronger than if we just went after it trying to get them to push more weight. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, it does make sense. In fact, uh, what you were talking about, I was trying to make a determination to see if there was uh, naturally, uh, what you just said, everybody's an individual, but I thought, uh, in theory, everybody that shows up, you should be able to teach them basic golf swings, but you're, you're talking about something that's a little bit more involved than just uh, actual swing. You're talking about transferring power and doing things. Well, there, there are change. some similarities in every swing. I mean, golf, sure. the golf swing has to have certain components. Right. And uh, one of the cool things that I've found is the best athletes that I've worked with for golf were actually girls, competitive cheerleader girls, who did tumbling. Wow. Because their, their awareness in space was fantastic. Their ability to rotate was unbelievable. And their balance was just perfect. So their ability to create power was one of the best things that I had seen. Now, of course, not, every, not all those girls were strong, but as far as being able to, once they got a little bit of strength, transfer that into power in the golf swing, it was the best turnover I've ever seen. And that I didn't know. Yeah. So, I will tell you what. Now, so do more than just one sport. I like Transfer that. Skill Cross training is like good. That. Definitely. Cross yeah. training. But I'll, I'll tell you what. Well, that was one of the questions I had. Now you can have them back for a little bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so what about uh, we've got, we were talking about TPI, which stands for Titles Performance Institute. Yeah, you're certified I, in that. And then I, you're my TPI, right? Is it? Well, no, I took, so I took the TPI. I have two levels of that. Uh, I took the junior when I was at the academy. Right. So they have three levels. Um, I, have, I took the Nike 360 when they had that. We also did some specific training for when I was at the academy um, for the old 360 skills test that they had. Mm -hmm. So it was basically to understand how to do the assessments and then administer your findings on those assessments. So that was part of it. And then, honestly, my certification list is pretty pretty lengthy just because I love continuing education. I love learning new skills, which is why I spent that time in the library because it was something that I didn't know that I needed to know before I was going. So I, I liked it. And then recently we were talking, you, you, you developed your own uh, fitness ball, yeah. if you want to call it that. So yeah, you wanted yeah. to give us a little bit of description of what, where you're going well, there? Well, uh, I've been working a long time on trying to find something that was needed. So when I was working with Volvic, uh, we were restricted in space and availability, like as far as what we could purchase and travel with. And I looked for a medicine ball to be able to take with me. And we had a limit in space because we only take so much. So I actually created my own invention. I designed it. Um, I'm currently at the part where I'm trying to find funding to get my prototype built. Because I have relationships in fitness um, from my relationship with Life Fitness where I'm their educational uh, specialist for their product training. Um, and then all the other people that I know through years and years of being in the fitness industry. But just trying to make it so that if there's a traveling athlete, they can actually take just one piece of equipment or even somebody like here in the gym that you have here, let's say you had four of those models of what, I'm, what I created, you'd be able to have four people have the same size ball instead of having to go through your typical set of four pounds, six pounds, eight pounds, and 10 pounds. So adjust the, in a nutshell, adjust, you can adjust the weight. Yeah. So yeah. you can adjust the weight on the ball. And I, and I know we work, I work with the kids and I, and I have the different weight balls based on the, the level of the kid and the strength of the kid, so you have to switch the balls out so they can do the exercise. Exactly. So that would be one ball, and you, can, you could adjust the weights. From exactly, and if you have more than one shell, you could, use, you could use four shells, and everybody could have the same ball, whether it be the max weight or the minimum weight, minimum weight. which is one of the things that I thought would be kind of cool. What would the ball, your 
projected, what would the ball cost? To I mean, sell? it kind of depends on uh, what materials we get to use, but I'm thinking between $100 and $250, depending on if I get to use the nice stuff and right. it'll last forever, I would like say $250. What materials would you, would you say? So sitting in the library, uh, I learned that there's a difference in the quality of plastic and also the density of rubber. So depending on the grade and how long it'll hold up and what the responsiveness is. And I thought about a ton of other features. But if it goes toward the high end, it'll have a lot of features that make the value go up a lot. Because that's just what I expect. What is, and, and, and this uh, seems like an obvious question, I apologize, but, but what is the, the key attribute that your product is going to provide? Uh, not only does it adjust, but you can throw it, slam it, all that stuff, and it stays uniform, which in all the other products that I've researched and looked at, they don't have that capability. So my ball will hold up to, well, in the design, I have to say that. In the design, it's made to hold up to a full, complete impact. So that's a drop of 10 feet being able to recoil. Wow. wow. Yeah, so working on it still, but I like it. So wh where are you at? What? What job are you doing right now? I mean, I know right you, now, are you independent um, or are you? Well, I'm still independent for a couple more months. I do freelance for Life Fitness as their education specialist for their machines. I still train a couple of golfers. I have some private clients, and all those three components together are enough to keep me going. Um, but I will be transitioning actually into uh, running a franchise, which is specifically targeted toward women and mothers. It's called Burn Boot Camp. I changed to, the reason why I was so inspired to do it is because, of course, you know, I have three girls right. and my wife always talks about what she'd be able to do and how she wants to get her health back and how important that is. So would it be kind of like the YMCA as a boot camp? Uh, well, it's a boot morning? camp and the difference is these workouts are tough. Right. I go through the workouts right now. I've lost 25 pounds in the past three months because it's not just the workouts, but it's also the eating. And it's also the mindset. Like these, I don't think it ever gets easier, but I think I get tougher. And I, I love the pace. It's 45-minute workouts. And so we're, we're actually moving. We're bringing the gym to Orlando, hopefully, in November is when we'll open. It'll be over toward the Baldwin Park area. And so 45 minutes, it. is it a uh, – what's the class size on that? For, do you have it a just depends. But, I mean, it can range from 10 to 60, 80. just depends. Like Zumba, like a Zumba yeah, class. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and there's loud music, a lot of fun, and yeah, it, that's it's good. A I think you got to keep it fun. Workout. Oh, I mean, you know, one thing me. I like, I've been to the Zumba. You ever been to Zumba class? Oh, before? sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I always thought, oh, well, they're gonna be easy. First of all, they're not. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> there's no break. You keep. You gotta keep right. dancing. You, yeah, you that's don't the take whole a goal. break. You, and one thing I was impressed with the Zumba class is that you've got kids that are ten, and then you've got people that are eighty. That's right. Yeah. I mean, you that's have right. the and you have everything. Well, that was the vision for that model, and you know, as long as as long as fitness is fun, people will keep on doing it. But I, I think that the the difference where with this gym is we uh, we deliver results in advance, so. Our whole goal is to get you what you want, what you're looking for. So um, we actually have some great transformation stories, like uniformly. And uh, it's, I just I love the concept. You know, I've been in fitness for a long time. Oh, yeah. And I loved everything about it. I loved how the respect that they have for the trainers and the amount of work that they put in and making sure that they're happy. The effect of coming at a person with a complete plan and being able to deliver that individual attention in a group setting. And, the structure that they have for that is, I think, one of the better models of fitness. That so I've do seen. we have, do you, are you in a, in a position where you, you're taking more clients on right now? Yeah, now? yeah. Honestly, I would say if you, if you want to reach me, then, you know, you can always reach out to you. But right. um, the we best could, way to we reach could me put, is, We could yeah. put your, your sure. address and yeah, your phone number at the end Absolutely. of the show. That yeah, when we finish the show this week. So, uh, Greg, would We'll get your information, so when we do finish, we can ask you more questions before the show ends. But yeah, at the sure. end of the show, we'll, we'll have a, how, how they can get a hold of you, either through email or through a, a phone call, whatever you'd prefer. Yeah, for sure. sure. For sure. That works. And I'll tell you what, uh, and I don't know what more other questions you had, but as you know, Tom, I always like to have our guests, like to uh, just get them off their topic and talk about golf for a little bit, because I want to know who you think should be on the Ryder Cup team that Ooh. isn't on it yet. Mm. Let's Let see. Think. Let's see if he knows his golf. Well, we'll see. Well, oh, this is a well, question <laughs> to trick him, huh? Yeah, this is kind of tough because uh, let's see. There, I, I think that more of the young guys, there's so many more entrants yeah. of the young guys in there, so it's kind of hard to keep track unless you know them personally. 
um, because you know you could have a great week and then you could not have a great week. Well, I got to say, I didn't mean to trick you. I, I, no, no, but I, no, no. But I will say this: I have a really good friend that plays, and I know that he. I hope that he plays great next year. So that way he'll be one of those bids. All right. But uh, his name is Morgan Hoffman. If you can hear oh, me out Morgan there, Morgan Hoffman. Right, Morgan. It's my boy. He had, so. a, he, had a, he had a great tournament a couple of weeks ago. He did. He really had a he great did. tournament. He did. I mean, he had a little bit of stall in the middle there. But, I mean, watching him play golf and the way that he plays golf, it's aggressive enough. And when he's on, he's on. Like well, the kid a, can play. There's a prediction. So next year. We're going to find out Do just it. next year. So, or not next year, but next, in two years when yeah. the next Ryder Cup yeah. is. Morgan Hoffman's a name to watch. And I'll tell you what, uh, I was what? very enamored of him as a player. I thought he... Well, what he did in the FedEx Cup two years yes. ago. Yeah. Well, wow. Me. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Wow. That's he's right. Had, Way to he's, roll. He's, had, uh, he's uh, really opened some eyes, I think. So I think that's fantastic. And how about you, Pro? Who are you pulling for? Well, if we're going to go for long shots, not this year, but next year is and when i talked to him because i had a chance he was in the gym here at, at harbor hills for a week is the guy that won on the web.com last week ryan brim oh, yeah. yeah yeah i know brim yeah, yeah. brim was here yeah. for a week so i got a chance to hit balls with him i, I filmed the swing on the range he talks about you know he hits it as far as dustin johnson and he was talking about distance trying to control his distance not i need to hit it far because i hit plenty far enough that is the truth and he was like uh and his, i got to meet his family and his wife and and just seeing the the individual you know with his guard down just being a normal guy going you know I'm trying to make a living out here uh i made it to the you know web.com now i gotta make now i gotta take the next step and he won you're making the next step and you know he's got and you've known him he's yeah. got all the tools to win i mean he won and, on the web.com that's, the, that's he's the got beautiful everything thing about well, where golf is now is these guys i mean anybody can win each week but you got to have the right collection and you can't control the bounces but these guys are all amazing I think that that's uh, one of the things that sets golf apart from every other sport. Is like the whole field is just an awesome collection of really, really great players. What's and what's great too, obviously, uh, you're you're playing against the guys, but you're really playing the course. So yeah. and you're 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 playing against yourself too. What you oh, can of course, do and what you of can't course. Do. But I think that's I think that's fantastic. But I'll tell you what, if you went on the web these days, if you can win on the web, you can win anywhere. You can win anywhere. Those guys, they're all they all hit the ball and and. and you know, the good ones end up on the tour, and then two years later, the next set come up there. And I, it's just an unbelievable cadre of talent. And I, well, I was just and, and interesting to hear you say that because there's a couple guys. Morgan Hoffman is a perfect example. Somebody I wouldn't think of off the top of my head. That guy's just destined for stardom. And, my, and I don't sure. think about him, but just watching him. Well, up you, like I said, 10 years ago, you probably had 30, 40 solid candidates of who you could pick to win, and you were pretty safe. Now they do that draft pool because... People you've never heard of. I mean, you look at uh, who won the Bay Hill that, what's his name? I know him. I'm trying to remember his name. But he won Bay Hill two years in a row. Two years in a row. Matt, uh, every. 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 Yeah. Right? Every. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at just certain courses for certain people, times where they peak. I mean, that guy knew that course inside and out. Yeah. And Confidence level, too. Exactly. He believes exactly. he can win. And it's, you know, it's his home course. He, he got it done. Exactly. <laughs> Now, of course, if you were looking from the outside, you're like, oh, well, let me pick Phil or let me pick yeah, somebody course, else. Yeah, sentimental. Yeah, you, you would have missed. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Well, that wraps us up. Uh, that's how fast things go. We're, we've thank got our four me. rounds. We, but, no, thank you. I, I, we want to have Jamal back, though. Maybe when For he sure. gets his uh, fitness. The, when I get the gym open? When you get the gym open, maybe yeah, we can have, have him back we're later. Have Jamal's, thank you so uh, Jamal's uh, information, if you want to get a hold of him, we're going to have it on the screen at the end. So, you know, tune in to our uh, – you know, turn in www.plankfromthetips.com and uh, watch the show and uh, check out uh, Jamal's uh, information. And uh, I want to thank him again. We had a great show, and we thank you for listening. And we'll see you next week with another session of Playing from the Tips. Very good. Thank you. Thank that you. Was fun, Thanks for having me, Coach. Yeah, man. Outstanding. Had a great time. Outstanding. Very nice. Thank you so much. This is cool.